Hi everyone, my name is King IV and this is Introduction to SAS. This is the final lesson in Introduction to SAS and today we'll be covering mostly PROC Freak and PROC Mean. I'm going to say PROC Univariate for our Introduction to SAS Statistics, which I'll be covering in the next couple weeks. Uh, so if you haven't checked the previous six lessons, uh, definitely check them out. And I'm really excited to teach PROC Freak and PROC Mean because I think you've spent so much time learning SAS, now it's time to actually do some cool and interesting things with SAS. So you've learned the basics. Now let's start moving on to the little bit more advanced stuff. So proc freak and proc mean are good ways of, uh, of analyzing and developing some descriptive statistics on your data. So here, let's start with proc freak. And proc freak is pretty similar to any other proc step. So you want to go proc freak and then you want to define your data. In this case, we'll be using the SAS help dot cars. And then we're just going to write the word tables. And then we're just going to look at the frequency of origin, origin being where the, these cars are made. So you can see here you have the frequency. So how many instances do they occur? What the percentage is relative to the total population? And you'll see this cumulative percentage. And cumulative percentages in this case is not really that important because these are non-ordinary, which means there's no particular order in the origin. In this case, they're just ordered by alphabetic order, but they're not ordered by, for example, ranking as a, as a good example. Uh, yeah, ranking is probably the best example in terms of categorical variables. Uh, next, what we're going to do is we're just going to add a title here just so we can differentiate between these different uh, reports that we're running. So here we go, origin, freak, one way. And then we're going to paste this and then what happens if you want to know not or not only the origin frequency but also the drivetrain frequency at the same time so we're going to add drivetrain to this table so pretty simple really straightforward let's run that and now we have not only up here the original one but also the new report that we created which has both origin and drivetrain and you'll see the frequency here for origin and then the frequency here for drivetrain. So pretty neat, pretty interesting. What happens if we want to do more than just uh, one way frequency? So oftentimes the interesting components are not only the frequency of a single categorical variable, but the frequency of two categorical variables, the three categorical variables. So the way we do this is all we have to do is put this percent, uh, not percent sign, this multiplication sign, and you'll see here it produces kind of like a pivot table uh, across the top where drivetrains across the top and then origin is, our, is the rows. Uh, and then you'll see here that the total here, this 158, ties up to the table up here. And this 92 ties up here so you can see the totals uh, but the, really interesting so you can see the number of Asia all-wheel drive number of Asia front wheel drive real world drive etc and th so that's the frequency and they also have the percentage the percent total percentage relative to the population you also have the row percentage so within this particular row how many of Asia is all-wheel drive front wheel drive and real world drive and as well you have the column percentage so you can see how pervasive is all-wheel drive relative to each of the regions. So really interesting. You can immediately tell us some interesting inferences from this data. So for example, you can see that front wheel drive is much more popular than all wheel drive and real world drive in Asia. And that's also the case in the US. But you'll see in Europe, it's actually that real wheel drive actually comes out ahead, not in the same majority as front wheel drive in Asia and in US, but it's actually an interesting inference that you can use to better understand your data so you can understand whether or not your results are reasonable when we go and perform some more advanced analysis, whether that's ANOVA, whether that's regression, whether that's logistic regression, or some of the more complicated stats procedures that are available. Okay, perfect. So let's keep continuing on. What happens if I wanna put this in a different format and I wanna utilize an option called list all I'm gonna do here is go slash list and you'll see how it presents the data in a different manner instead of presenting it as a cross kind of like this table it'll present it in this kind of put them all in one row you'll see here this 34 corresponds with this 34 up here so you can kind of do the comparison across the board 
obviously you don't have the row and column percentages which may be a disadvantage for you to take a look at but it's still interesting you can still see some of the outliers you can immediately tell that front wheel drive uh real wheel drive and front wheel drive are some outliers uh in in this area but it also can be just deceiving because the population by origin is different, but not overly different. But if, for example, Asia or the US or Europe were significantly large or small, these percentages may be deceiving because there are percentages across the board, not relative to the particular area. Or you may find that useful. Um, I don't know. Uh, a couple of different options that we're going to be utilizing a cross list. So all you have to do here is define cross list and it presents a and again, another interesting view of your of your data. So you can see here uh, the view of the data, where it does it within each of the areas. Which is good, interesting, something to to look at, and as well does the percentages here. So another again, another completely not completely different, but another another view. If for example, I want to put this to a table, all I have to do here is define it again. Let's say with output and then all you have to do here is write out like you do in a lot of other proc, proc statements especially when we do proc in, uh, output uh, here we're going to go proc free you know, work work dot free so it's going to save to the temporary work file and then, so now if we go to a temporary work file the work library you'll see here now we have the frequency here now we can run some additional analysis some additional statistics uh, some really useful information so that's proc freak and that's great and let's move on to proc mean which i also think is super useful so let's go up here uh, and go proc mean and let's just run it with all with all numeric variables Okay, and let's go proc mean data equals SAS help cars. And all we're gonna do is if we just run it, okay, I misspelled means here, and it's, I forgot the thing going here. So you can automatically tell based off the coloring whether or not your script's gonna be successful or at least has any syntax errors. Uh, and you'll see here, it basically does, these are the default statistics that are run so mean obviously the average the standard deviation of of this particular sample uh the minimum and maximum values so you can see here uh really interesting really useful perfect and that's that's good uh but you might think like oh is that all the statistics that you can run with proc means not even close so here we didn't define any variables but if for example we wanted to define uh, certain variables so for example if we wanted to go uh, var msrp and we only want to analyze that data and i wanted to analyze for example i want to know uh let's say this i just want to look at the normality uh, of the of the data so i go i'll go mean i'll go kurtosis and i'll see how skewed the data is for msrp and you take a look here, presents some, so you can see this data is probably not a normal bell curve. So you can actually take a look at that and run some analysis. So that's good. It's interesting. Uh, for example, maybe we want to run it across different origins to see whether or not the data is normal, which we'll cover in when we cover our stats components. So here we're going to go class origin. And we're going to run it. And you'll see here. Some interesting analysis around obviously the number of ops is and you can obviously put an option to get rid of the number of ops uh, you can see here across the different ones which ones are are normal you'll see that the us is more closer to a normal normal bell curve and that there may be a number of different reasons for that so if you have any questions comments feel free to leave it in the comment section below thank you so much for listening to introduction to sas playlist if you haven't checked out the other videos to this playlist be sure to check them out watch videos one through seven and if you have any questions or comments leave it in the comment section below more than happy to help and don't forget to subscribe and i look forward to speaking to you next time thank you